Good morning. Today we are reading Mark 15, 33 to 41 from the NIV. Um, I am Cheryl Myers and I live in Bentley. The death of Jesus. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lamna sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar and put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Now, in this little act, extract, um, it, it's a pivotal bit. Um, Jesus is on the cross. Death is really near. He doesn't just feel abandoned. Um, he's facing the horror of separation from God. We watch him cry out. He asks, why have you forsaken me? And in the run up to this, Jesus has suffered horribly, emotionally and physically. And yet this is the first time he actually cries out to the father. He's betrayed by a friend. He's interrogated. He's beaten, flogged, insulted. He's wrongly accused. He's tried and then he's sentenced to a gruesome death. His closest disciples fled and Peter denied knowing him. Jesus was completely alone on the cross. He endured not just the physical torment and the torture, but also the, the spiritual torment of being separated from the Father. It's a scene of high drama. Jesus gives this loud cry, we're told. He takes his last breath and the curtain of the temple is torn in two. The centurion declares, surely this man was the son of God. And so we come to what, in my mind, of just this bit that we're looking at today, I see as the second half. Now, before we look at it, um, I, I sort of feel it's important to say that this isn't a gender talk. This isn't men versus women. It's not a gender statement. Um, I am merely making an observation based on the passage. That's my disclaimer. Um, so we come to 41, uh, 40 verses 40 to 41. It's in total contrast to what's just come before. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. We live in times of a culture of celebrity and through social media and an online world, it's more pervasive than ever. And it's really easy to catapult into seeming fame. And it's dangerously easy to compare and in doing so to feel less than or invisible. At certain times in my walk with Jesus, I have become more than a little fixated on the disciples. Um, I've been really drawn to this motley crew who um, were an unlikely crowd, that they dropped their nets, they left their jobs, they left their families, they left everything that they um, knew. They surrendered everything to follow this man, Jesus. And they became the sort of dream team in spite of all their flaws. And they surrounded him and they went everywhere with him. And that's where my focus is typically drawn. And I like to think, oh, I, I wish, I pray that, you know, if I were in that situation, I would have been one of those disciples. I would have left everything to follow Jesus. And yet, as I read this passage today, I am struck in a new way 
by this passage by the women. Their quiet servitude, their faithful loyalty that exists without sort of glory. They're not seeking a spotlight. The women who helped support Jesus and his ministry then really powerfully followed him as he passed through the streets of Golgotha. They were present at the cross and later we read that they met him at an empty tomb. They were present in the upper room at Pentecost. Their love for him pushed them on. They followed Jesus literally to the cross and beyond and they watched him endure the most horrific death. Their hearts must have broken and yet they remained. They didn't know then, they didn't have the benefit of hindsight that we have now. They didn't know then that they would then go on to face an empty tomb and meet a resurrected Christ. But still they followed, they loved from afar and they refused to let him suffer alone. Now, to those of you who know me or um, perhaps have even just met me, it will come as no surprise that when I was a child at school, I wanted to be Mary in the school nativity. Um, she was demure and quiet, and yet she took centre stage. She wore this amazing blue dress. Or I wanted to be a king um, in their amazing flamboyant outfits and their um, gifts wrapped with gold paper and sort of crinkly quality street wrappers. Or I wanted to be an angel um, with huge fluffy wings and a beautiful white dress and gold tinsel all over me, um, but I was never picked. Instead, I was always an innkeeper or a shepherd, which can't be knocked, or a sheep. Or one year when I was <laughs> with my papier-mâché hat, um, I was a hen at the nativity scene. I can't quite remember what I was doing there. I've obviously wiped it from my memory. But regardless, I really did feel a bit unnoticed and a bit irrelevant, not special enough to be picked for one of the main roles. The passage today and the bit I want to focus on speaks to me about the power of being in the background. Actually, there's no such thing as the background. It's more about where you choose to put your focus in the first place. And here for me today, these women take centre stage. They speak to me of all the qualities that I long for. The ability to love with an unswerving loyalty and faithfulness. Their steadfast, unassuming faith that follows Jesus even to the grave and beyond. And that strength and courage that they have to walk alongside a man in torment, suffering unimaginable horrors, but refusing to look away or leave him. Today, I want to end with a challenge for all of us to open our eyes a bit and look, to see strength in hidden places, to find power in quiet roles, and to look away from the limelight and from recognition. And it's my prayer for all of us today to know that the greatest place of intimacy is to walk alongside Jesus quietly and to know that that one place we can truly be seen is right there. Amen. <laughs>